We just had a baby and we wanted to share all of the things that happened for baby and for mom in that first day after birth. Yes, yeah, so if this is your first time meeting us, I'm Sarah, I'm a board certified OBGYN. I'm Kurt, I'm a board certified pediatrician. And, and we, we are, are the Doctors Dr. Bjorkman. Welcome back. As we said, we just had a baby this past week and want to share with you kind of everything to expect in those first 24 hours after baby is born because it can be a blur and a roller coaster. So next, we're, we're kind of gonna go over all the baby stuff and then the mom stuff. And so we'll start with the pediatrician and the baby stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So right away, that first hour is the golden hour. This is a special time for baby to be bonding with family. And so this is skin to skin time, helps promote breastfeeding, helps promote bonding, decreases risk of postpartum depression, mm -hmm. um, and helps with anxiety. All of these things just from that natural connection of baby with parents and that bond that happens at that skin to skin time. Other key things, so like even Sarah, you had like a special bra that just allowed you to like be a nursing bra. Wow, <laughs> special bra. Um, yes, super fancy. But that, that skin to skin time again is promoting that breastfeeding initiation and all these other good things that these baby friendly and other birth centers really are working to promote. Yeah, so, so baby boy was directly on the chest. It was nice. We've got some experience with breastfeeding before, mm -hmm. and and he actually like. To it right away yeah but they didn't they didn't take him they nope. didn't weigh him they didn't give him a bath they didn't do anything none of those first shots nothing for an hour because sure. right after he was born i was like oh well do you want to weigh him and they're like no nope. nope. this first hour this is just hour for you. we want him on you yeah um, and then so then after that, the nursing staff and actually the hospital we were at had 24-hour pediatrician in-house yeah. to do an exam right then. Yep. That isn't the case in all places. Right. Just sometime in the first 24 hours, they're examined by pediatric staff mm -hmm. um, or, or family, family medicine. Doctor. Exactly. Um, but um, definitely things that need to happen right away after that hour is over is things like um, getting a good weight, length, head circumference, kind of baseline examination measurements to make sure and see where things are at and see that there's nothing kind of out of the ordinary or mm -hmm. severely abnormal that needs to be cared for. Okay, yeah. Of course, we talked about that golden hour too. The times when that won't happen is if your baby is in distress and mm -hmm. like isn't like doing well, then there may be times where that golden hour has to be cut short because baby needs extra attention. But okay. as long as things are going well, like that is a very special time. Mm -hmm. So what about other baby things? Yeah, so some other things that are probably gonna happen in those first couple hours of life are certain things to prevent complications from infection um, and significant bleeding that can occur in young infants. So um, kind of first things is the first vaccine actually standardly happens in the first 24 hours of life, sometimes actually like even while babies on mom, it's like a time where baby's being comforted, it's a nice time. And that one vaccine is hepatitis B. Um, it always like feels a little early, but the reason that that one shot is given so early is because complications of hepatitis B really early in life have a really high risk of converting to cancer later in life. And so that's where the sooner that baby gets protection, and this is the only vaccine in the US we give this early, um, is that hep B vaccine that's given in that first day of life. And again, chances of getting hep we are very low. Very low, um, but the but complications are pretty severe. Pretty severe, and it's just one of those things that it's we're able to prevent. And we did talk about all of this in a little more detail in our video about okay. the first what to expect in those first 24 hours for, for baby, baby, which we can link here. Yeah, um, and then some other things. So a vitamin K shot is mm -hmm. the other shot. So kind of two shots right away. Um, of all the things, this is the one thing that could affect baby kind of the most severely right away. Um, babies don't have great clotting factors and they have a deficiency of vitamin K, which helps form blood clots. And so um, it's an increased risk, especially for significant brain bleeds. And so that's one of those things that we definitely didn't hesitate um, to have happen. Yeah. Um, and then the third kind of thing right out of the gate is oftentimes it's strongly recommended for um, an eye antibiotic to help um, prevent 
you have erythromycin ointment um, to prevent infections of the eye that can lead to blindness. So those are kind of the three things that happen for baby kind of in the first couple hours. And like, if you're not ready for it, you may be like, oh, what's happening out of baby? Um, but just things to, to expect kind of standard here in the US. And there's some slightly different practices in uh, Europe and elsewhere in the, in the world, but kind of those are standard practice here in the US for all babies in yeah. almost all institutions. And it can kind of feel like a lot, like yeah. they're, you're checking your vitals constantly right after you give birth. You've got your blood pressure cuff on. It's going off like it feels like constantly. Um, they're checking the baby's vitals, you know, every 15 to 30 minutes or so, you know, in that first hour or two. They're keeping a really close eye on mom and on baby, baby yep. to make sure everything is going fine. And that transition happens. Yep. Yep. Speaking of transition, so baby's gone from like kind of really not having to do any of the major things of life to now like being out in the world disconnected from mom. And so like key goals for that first 24 hours. So of course, easy breathing, kind of doing all those things. Mm -hmm. Next key thing is feeding. So this is why kind of that golden hour is so important, like establishing feeding, breastfeeding, if that's your goal, or if you're going to formula feed, like making sure baby's able to feed and swallow. And then the results and the product of that great feeding are peeing and pooping. So these are also things making sure that all of the plumbing is connected and things are working. And so sometime in that first 24 hours, you wanna see a good pee and a good poop and make, your nurse is gonna to wanna to know these too. So if this happens, make sure you make a note of it, write down the yeah. time and so that they can chart those things because those are things that must happen for you guys to go home. Yeah, and this time, I mean, so with the first baby, I had an app and I was putting in the peas and the poops and whatever. This time, wasn't doing any of those things. And the nurses would come in and be like, oh, what time did he pee? pee? Or what time did he poop? Or what? And I'm just like, I don't, like, I don't know. Um, so don't, right, so don't be surprised. They're going to want that data. Yeah. Um, and first time mom, Sarah, was like all over it. Second time mom was like, he peed, but he's fine. Yeah. So, um, but it's their job and they just want to make sure yeah. everything's okay. Other pro tip for your sweet baby in the hospital and that poop, that first, those first poops are meconium and it's really like this thick, thick black, black tarry. Ugh. So pro tip, put some Vaseline or Aquaphor, or some kind of barrier cream on baby's butt before they poop. Just when you change his diaper, put some barrier cream on so that then when they have that meconium poop over it, it just like wipes off really so nice thick and, sticky. and easily as opposed to that thick sticky tar kind of being stuck to their butts. So pro tip, Aquaphor on the buns before they poop, you will thank me, I promise. Yeah. And then other big things that happen kind of right at the end of that 24 hours or the things mm -hmm. are just kind of key health screenings that you should expect kind of need to happen before discharge. So some big things here are a hearing screen. Um, this helps look for like possible CMV infection, which can cause hearing issues and just other hearing difficulties. Mm -hmm. um, and then at that 24 hour mark, there is um, here in the US, they do like a heel prick. They get a little drop of blood from the heel and this is actually sent off for testing. Depending on the state you're in, the number of things they test for may, may right. vary, but most states it's a few over 50 different genetic conditions mm -hmm. that are are rare but have significant complications but with treatment um, those complications can be prevented and so that's why it's so important that they send that testing right away you usually get those results back in the first couple days yep and those uh, that's screening for some recessive genetic conditions yep um, and then the third thing and that happens after 24 hours is screening for cyanotic congenital heart disease um, which is close to my heart as a pediatric cardiologist. Um, and this is a very simple test. They actually just take the pulse ox, the blood saturation, oxygen saturation in the right arm and then in one of the legs and they make sure that both of those numbers are good and that there's not a significant difference between the two. Um, this has been instituted, instituted in the past 10 years here in the US and has done an amazing job at kind of reducing the number of children who are discharged um, with missing a diagnosis of Congenital Critical. heart, congenital congenital heart, heart disease. disease. Yeah. Um, it is, doesn't catch everything, and this mm -hmm. is why it's so important that the pediatrician still does a thorough exam that's gonna happen in that first 24 hours, looking right. for other things outside of just heart issues, but um, they can also pick up on some other things that this screen can't, but it is a very important part of that first 24 plus hours of life. Yeah, and those things usually happen like at the 24 hour mark. So. Yeah. Bo was born Morning. at 2.49 and they came to get him at, 3, at yeah. 3 to like do the screening at 24 hours. They also checked a bilirubin oh, yeah. level at 24 hours. 
Um, yeah, and so that is just because babies transitioning from having sharing blood with the placenta and mom to like being out in the world, um, it is normal that they have some blood breakdown, and then the byproduct of that blood breakdown is bilirubin, which shows up as jaundice, yellow, yellow yeah. skin. Yellow um, and so the best way to treat that is for baby to eat lots because mm -hmm. they poop it out. Mm -hmm. um, if the levels get too high, then they need special right. phototherapy, which then allows them to pee it out too. Yep. Um, hopefully not something you need, but it is not uncommon right. that babies need that here in the U.S. and something commonly checked and tested for. Yep. And then the final thing in mm -hmm. my mind, I don't know if you have anything else, but um, for boys in particular, oh, mm -hmm. um, this is the time for circumcision um, standardly for most people in the U.S. If that's something you and your family are considering, um, usually they're able to do that in that first time period before going home. Mm -hmm. um, some variations from this is if there's any like issues with how things have formed, sometimes it needs to be done later by a right. urologist, mm -hmm. um, but if it's done later, then it needs to be done with anesthesia sedation yep. um, in that first window of time actually usually local anesthetic and some sugar water is able to like help keep the baby calm and comfortable during that procedure yep. after that time the skin actually changes and it just becomes um, like more difficult to do the procedure more bleeding associated and other things too and so yeah. doing it in that first couple days of life is really helpful yeah so some circumcision care tips yes um, and we can talk about more about this in our one week video but in those first you know 24 hours after they have their circumcision done their their little their penis is a little sore and raw and you have to keep a lot of Vaseline on it constantly mm -hmm. with every diaper change you want to be putting Vaseline on their penis so it does not stick to the diaper yep. super important otherwise you kind of don't touch it um the pro tip here there. that we found was mm -hmm. even nicer is we put vaseline on the little two by two squares of gauze mm -hmm. and then we're able to just put that over the end of the penis and that way yep. like we ended up using a lot less vaseline, vaseline. and it like just better protected and like yeah. he was just angry kicking with every diaper change there for the first couple days and yeah. so this just allowed us to like easily put that over the yeah. end of the penis and then keep yep. it from sticking yeah because the they had told us in the hospital just like ice cream cone it put so much vaseline on and, and we're going through tubes and tubes of vaseline I was, just kind we of like we have to and like, find some a better alternative so yeah. that is the pro tip for that the only other baby thing i think that happens in that first day or depending on how long you're there is you have to make sure your birth certificate gets filled oh, out yeah. um usually you have to there's usually a person at the hospital who comes and brings you information to get filled out for the birth certificate get that signed, make sure their name spelled correctly, your address, all that stuff yep. um, before you leave the hospital. On to mom stuff? On to mom stuff. All right, so you just had a baby. Congratulations, you're a warrior. Labor is so much work. It's it's like a marathon. It is a workout. You know, I talk have talked about how I like want to be in a sports bra for labor because again, it's a really active process. You're moving around all these different things. So. Your sweet baby is born, kind of what do you expect in the next 24 hours? And the first thing is kind of like so much joy, so many emotions, mm -hmm. so exhausted because yeah. you just did so much work. Whether you had a vaginal delivery or a C-section, they are kind of two different flavors of you worked really hard um, to get that baby here. So, so we're still exhausted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not wrong. Yeah. So. If you have a vaginal delivery, kind of right after baby comes out there, if everything's fine, they're going to throw that baby on your chest and then you're kind of just blissed out there. Mm -hmm. Other things that have to happen is your placenta has to be delivered. Um, and so you may or may not notice that happening. There are no bones. It's much smaller, so you may not notice. Um, but we expect that placenta to deliver within 30 minutes of baby being born. And then after that placenta comes out, usually you get Pitocin for, you know, a bit it depends on your hospital's protocol but we want to make sure that uterus is contracting down um and that's iv medication it's an iv medication okay. unless you don't have an iv then we can give it i am um but that really helps the uterus contract um, because we need the uterus to contract down because where that placenta was is kind of an open bed of blood vessels and so we need that to contract down to stop your bleeding to keep mm -hmm. that bleeding stopped and so that's something else you're going to notice um, Every time your nurse comes in after that baby's born, they are going to be pushing on your fundus or the top of the uterus, your belly button and below to make sure
sure that uterus is staying down and staying firm. Okay, um, because if it isn't, if it's getting boggy, we worry about bleeding. So your nurse is gonna be checking that fundus and checking to see how much bleeding you're having um, because that is a very common thing that's happening postpartum is you are going to be bleeding. We wanna make sure it's not too much, okay? I think another big part of that is just like that you were fortunate not to have this time but had the first time was like a repair of any lacerations and... Yes, so placenta comes out and then your OB is gonna do a really good exam to make sure and find out what, if there's anything that needs to be repaired, do you need any stitches? Um, and the vagina is truly an amazing thing. It heals so well. Um, and oftentimes your OB will have to put a couple stitches um, just to reapproximate everything so everything heals really nicely. If you are really uncomfortable and this is happening, let them know. Again, they can give you more pain medication. Mm -hmm. They can give you local um, anesthetic to try to help um, to minimize that pain. We don't want you to be in pain during this process. It okay. was a nice benefit of having an epidural. That is another, yes. Um, so that's kind of immediately. Other immediate things, just like they're checking on that baby all the time, they're gonna be checking your blood pressure, mm -hmm. um, you know, pretty frequently in that first hour or so postpartum. But again, it is so important. You've got that baby on your chest, your skin to skin. If you want, if breastfeeding is something that you're working on, um, sometimes you're going to work on getting baby to latch in that first hour um, and just really enjoying that sweet, sweet baby time. Um, if you have an epidural, you're usually still pretty comfortable. Um, if you didn't, they will be bringing you Motrin, Tylenol, whatever you need for some pain meds. Um, you do, depending on your hospital, you may stay in that room. You may go to a postpartum floor, kind of someplace different. Usually before you go move to your postpartum room, your nurse is gonna take your epidural out if you have one, which it's a little uncomfortable and they take all that tape off your back. In that postpartum, in the delivery room, you know, your nurse is gonna do a really beautiful, gentle job getting everything cleaned up. Birth is so messy. There's lots of blood and body fluids. Um, and so it is nothing your nurse and doctor are at all weirded out by. It's They've what we it do. Many, There's many times, blood yeah. everywhere. Um, and so they will help you get all cleaned up with warm soap and water. They will get you a giant pad and some mesh undies to just get you all fixed up and ready to go. Um, and then usually you go to postpartum um, a few hours after delivery. Um, and when we know, you know, that your bleeding is okay, your fundus is staying firm, everything's going okay with baby, your pain is pretty under control, um, blood pressure's okay, we say okay you can go to postpartum um, and so that moves you there so this is postpartum um, if no one's warned you it's not the most glamorous time you don't quite go back to normal right away um, but you're also like a warrior who just had a baby and it's a pretty cool thing so this is kind of a postpartum bathroom, um, at least in the United States. They're all gonna be a little different, um, a little different flavor, but some things you'll find that I love and are kind of help me live through those, that first day in the hospital. So don't forget your mesh undies. There will be lots of those for you. I really like a quick snap, easy access nursing bra. Um, the little guys in the diaper were kind of skin to skin all the time. Um, but it's just easy and comfy um, to do that. So, other things, big giant pads, peri bottle, um, one of my faves, the ice pad sickle. Um, and my trick for this, in case you make them extra cold, is after you open them, crack them, then sprinkle just a little bit of water on them and it makes them really, really cold. So these are nice to sit on um, until they get cold a few times a day to just help with swelling. Big fan there. Um, other classic Perry model. Um, really like these. You don't necessarily want to have to 
wipe anything. You use this to spray and clean when you're peeing. Um, it's also really nice to distract, to sometimes squirt water when you're peeing because then it distracts you because sometimes urine can sting if you have stitches or different things. Often other products that they'll have is some Dermaplast. It's a lidocaine spray that is cooling, some witch hazel and tux pads to also help with some swelling. Um, but that is kind of first day in the hospital for mama. Here we go. Once you are on postpartum again, all those things that happen for baby are going to be going on. Um, but it, there really is always someone coming into your room. Always. Um, if it's not to get your vitals, it's to get baby's mm -hmm. vitals. It's some, it's the anesthesiologist coming to check on you to see if you're feeling okay, if you're having any back pain, anything like that. Um, so just expect a lot of traffic. Yeah. Um, Pediatrician comes in, the OB comes in, yep. food delivery, mm -hmm. nurse comes Birth in. Birth certificate lady, yeah. It's yeah. the person coming to take baby's photos. Like, there's always somebody there. So in terms of that, when you're thinking about being comfortable postpartum, I like easy access for yeah. boob things. So like a nursing bra um, and then again really like to be skin to skin as much as possible mm -hmm. in those the, that first day and so I, I just had a robe mm -hmm. um and so if somebody came in i could buckle up the robe if nobody was around then could be skin to skin really easily with the baby um and as you saw some of the mesh undie um garb um you may have also seen that her buckling up the robe was a little challenging yeah. when talking but <laughs> so Things to continue to expect. Swelling of your perineum, okay? So as you, you can see, it took nine months to grow this baby. It's going to take time for everything to go back. You are going, your core is going to be jello. Um, you may have a lot, a lot of pressure in your pelvic floor. You may have pain if you had a tear or stitches. If you had a C-section, you just had major abdominal surgery. Mm -hmm. um, and so pain control is going to be a very real and important thing. Um, if you had a C-section, often you will need more than kind of ibuprofen and Tylenol. And so there may be some kind of narcotic pain medicine, oxycodone, Percocet, something. It depends on whatever um, your OB prefers. Mm -hmm. um, often vaginal deliveries, you can get away with Motrin and Tylenol it is enough um, to help with the pain. Again, all that swelling, um, vulva, vagina, those ice pads are really nice um, in the first 24 hours to help with inflammation. Um, you can, the, the peri bottles really help keep things clean so you don't have to wipe. Um, and again, especially, especially, especially if you are taking a narcotic like oxycodone or Percocet, take be taking a stool softener mm -hmm. miralax is gentle it works very well um, just so that you don't have to strain when you have a bowel movement i feel like the other big piece for mom and for baby during that first period is feeding oh yeah um, we haven't so, even gotten to the boobs yet yeah especially if you're doing breastfeeding like use all of the resources available to you while you're in the hospital yeah. your nurse there on postpartum has helped many many women with breastfeeding yeah. and then they often have lactation yes. consultants as well see them see the lactation consultant even if you think it's going perfectly have the lactation consultant come look at your latch help you through it mm -hmm. do that when you are at the hospital it is a resource that is provided by the hospital it is easy you are there yep. as soon as you get home and have problems which you may been there then you have to load the baby in a car go see the lactation consultant it's just more of a to do yeah. and so take advantage of that resource when you're there say yep. like hey i'd really like to see lactation today blah 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 yeah. Your nurse will make it happen. And the nurses are awesome, but still, I, the lactation consultants have thousands of hours of training to help women learn to breastfeed. And breastfeeding is so, so hard. You think it's supposed to be this natural thing. And maybe for some women, um, it comes easily. I was not one of those people. It was super hard. It sucked. I needed a lot of help. Um, and there's no shame. And even the second time through it, like, still yeah. helpful to have someone take a look. Yep. Yep. Um, so. Also, while we're on that, nipple care. <laughs> um, it's, it can be very painful. 
if it's super, super, super painful, it's a sign that you should get some help because something's going on with the, the latch. latch issue. Yeah. Um, it's not a deep enough latch. Maybe baby has a tongue tie or lip tie or something. Um, if it's super painful, definitely, absolutely see lactation, see them no matter what. Um, but know that that should be a trigger to say like, hey, maybe something's wrong. Um, so for nipple care, there's lots of different things. There are creams, there are butters, there are all a variety of shells and whatever. I personally like silverettes. They're these silver little discs that you put, you keep on your nipples kind of 24 seven unless baby's eating. They help with moist wound healing. I love them. Um, I feel like these are the, like one of the things in the hospital bag we packed that like you yes, most yes. loved and appreciated having. Yeah, they, oh, yeah. they saved me the first time around. I love them. Um, there are different things that you can do for moist wound healing. There's like these things called shellies that are little shells that accomplish the same thing. There's a knockoff silverette now on Amazon because they are expensive because mm -hmm. they're silver. Mm -hmm. um, there's lanolin, there's nipple butter. I didn't love those things just because I felt like it was really greasy and then was on my clothes and I just didn't like that. If you do, that's wonderful. They mm -hmm. had these, um, I had these like gel nipple pads or something, the first one that I'd like put in the refrigerator and then put them on my nipples. And that was really, really nice. But again, that was all a lot, and I thought the silverettes were just simpler. So that is what I have since transitioned to. Um, but nipple care is really important. Be doing something to help your nipples heal um, because those little little baby sharks um, can do a lot of damage. And Without so you, teeth, yeah. Yeah, so you want to make sure that you have a good latch. Um, and this is if you are work, if breastfeeding is your goal, it's something to think about, okay? If you are not going to breastfeed for whatever reason, um, you are gonna wanna wear a tight sports bra, ice, ibuprofen, um, not stimulate the nipples at all um, to, so because when your milk comes in, you're gonna be engorged, it is very uncomfortable. Um, and so those are some things to start doing right away if you are not going to breastfeed for whatever reason. So I think the last thing to kind of think about from mom, birthing person perspective is it's what partner should be doing and then like I feel like a thing that you needed a reminder about frequently is just like not lifting things right and I mean, like even like or like just make sure you're being helpful as a partner like carry all of the things um even if, if you had a c-section so the we don't want you to lift anything heavier than 10 pounds so that's about a gallon of milk um all that being said your core is shot okay you you don't have core strength your your bottom is going to be super sore it may feel super heavy i just felt like gravity just every time i get up i could feel that on my pelvic floor um and so just be really thoughtful if it hurts don't do it mm -hmm. for those first few weeks mm -hmm. you really want to take it easy and give your body time to just heal and recover and so let your partner help um do shifts ask for help from your family being rested is really important yeah. also making sure you're hydrated, hydrated and yeah eating partner's enough. job is to provide yes, food and hydration yes. and help with diapers like, yes totally those totally. are key things for you as partner to do yes so yes it's amazing how easy it is for you to forget to drink sometimes yeah, and eat. You're like just you're so just, busy. You're and, so busy yeah. and it's it's amazing. So we have videos on perineal care um, that you can check out. And I think that's kind of the first 24 hours. Often, if you have a vaginal delivery, you can go home somewhere, you know, after 24 to 48 hours if everything's going fine and they are ready to send baby home. If you have a C-section, it's usually somewhere between that two-day and four-day mark, depending on your insurance and your hospital and how everything's going. Um, another thing C-section mamas tend to really love is an abdominal binder. You may want one even after a vaginal delivery. Um, sometimes it really helps when you don't have that core support to have an abdominal binder just to give you a little extra core support. Um, so that was our first day in the hospital with baby. We 
we're ready to escape after yeah. our 24 hours for yeah. sure. We made it home. Mm -hmm. Baby got to meet Big Sister, which we're going to show you guys yeah. next week yes. um, and talk a little bit about that transition to home. The first day at home. We'll see you all next week. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.